Greetings, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to AP Physics One, the unit on sound, lesson four. So we're gonna continue talking about objects that have a natural frequency. So when you hit this water glass, it makes a sound, a note, which is associated with a frequency. If I hit it with something else, it makes the same note, which means that it has the same frequency. So this wine glass or water glass or a beverage container will vibrate at the same frequency every time I hit it. And that's what it means for it to have a natural frequency. Now, some things have multiple natural frequencies. Ooh, very exciting. And so I showed you the demonstration with the jump rope last time. I drew the, I had the jump rope uh, pulled between me and my filing cabinet. And I had it vibrate like this, which looked a lot like a regular jump rope. And if this is L, the length of the rope, it turns out that the length of that wave is 2L. The wavelength was twice the length of the rope. I also, when I spun it uh, with twice the frequency, instead of going woof, 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 if I went woof, 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 then it ended up looking like this. And there, this length L is also the length uh, lambda. So lambda was L. And I also could have, and we can keep doing this over and over and over again, but I also could have had it vibrate this way so that this is the wavelength from here to here, and that's one, two of the three thirds of L. In other words, the wavelength was two thirds L. So these one, two, three different wavelengths all fit on the string. And so those are multiple natural frequencies that the string has. And they all together follow this pattern. The wavelength that fits on there is equal to two over N times L. So I hope that sounds familiar. Two over one is two. Two over two is one. Two over three is two over three. Two over four, two over five, two over six would also fit in here as well. So those are the wavelengths. And then since I know that wave speed equals wavelength times frequency, I can talk about the different frequencies that work on here. Um, frequency is V over lambda. So frequency equals V over 2L. Frequency equals V over L. Frequency equals V over two thirds L. V over two thirds L puts the three up there. And so this is V over two L. This is two V over two L. This is three V over two L. So the different frequencies all fit into the form. Um, and V over 2L. These are the frequencies. These are the wavelengths. Where N is a natural number, which means one, two, three, and so on. Oops, one, two, three, and so on. That's review from last time. And I want you to look at these equations because they're gonna look really familiar in a couple minutes. So what I want to do now is talk about this pipe. Uh, it's called a PVC pipe. And if you ever do some uh, sprinkler uh, setup in your yard, you're going to use this PVC pipe to send the water along. It's nice and hollow. Can you see me through there? You should be able to see my eye through there. Anyway, um, it turns out that this also has a natural frequency. And let me show you how it is that the pipe has a natural frequency. 
It's got an open end there. And it's got an open end there. So as sound travels along through here, as it changes from being, as the sound travels from inside the pipe to outside the pipe, some of the sound will reflect back. And that could set up what we call a standing wave on the inside. And because this end is open, open here, it's not closed. I could close it with my hand. We'll talk about that later. But when it's open, the air particles can move back and forth. And so we're going to have what we call an anti-node. The particles are moving back a lot at each of these ends, anti-node. With the string, this or this or this or this or this would indicate an anti-node where the string is moving back and forth a lot. And at the ends on the string, we had a node, node, anti-node. On the pipe, it's sort of exactly the opposite. Instead of nodes at the end, I have anti-nodes at the ends. And so a way of drawing that, let's go and remember if I have a wave that looks like this. These places where I'm putting dots would be anti-nodes, where I have the dots. And these places where I'm putting Xs are nodes. X represents nodes. And so let's look at what it would mean if I have to go from an antinode to another antinode. Maybe I start at this antinode and go to here. Or maybe I start at this antinode and go to here. Or maybe I start at this antinode and go to here. Let's draw all three of those possibilities in this pipe. So the first one, I start up here and go down. I start up here, and by the next time I get to an antinode, I've gone down here. That would look like that. What if I go from an antinode and then up to another up top antinode? Well, that would look like this. And do you see that those two waves, the black one and the green one, they both fit in this pipe, but they're different wavelengths, aren't they? Let's draw the next one, a purple one. We're going to go from an antinode to another antinode to another antinode, and we're going to put the third antinode at this other end. So we go down here, up here, and then down here. Interesting. Now, what I want to do is I want to notice that these are three different wavelengths that fit in the pipe. And so I want to come up with some equations for those three different wavelengths and then turn those uh, wavelength equations into frequency equations. Because usually when we're talking about sounds, we talk about their frequency more than we talk about their wavelength. So if this is L, the length of the pipe. I think the green one is the easiest. I know it's in the middle, but let's start with that. For the green one, do you see that that's one full wavelength? But when I started up here with just my wave, this distance from crest to crest is the wavelength. So for the green one, I'm going to say the wavelength equals L. Now for this black one that I drew, that's half the wavelength. This is half the wavelength. So the wavelength is 2L. Down, I'd have to go another L to get all the way back up again. Now, this purple one might be a bit challenging. From here to here is what I want to call the wavelength. From a crest to the next crest. Huh, how far is that? I've got from crest to trough, from trough to crest, from crest to trough. 
Do you see that the pipe has been divided into thirds? This one, this one, and this one. And it took two of those thirds, the wavelength is two of the thirds of L. So there we go. Now I said, pay attention to this because it might look familiar. Look at that. These wavelengths, 2L, L, and 2 thirds L. 2L, L, and 2 thirds L. It's the same equations. So for a string tied at both ends or a pipe open at both ends, I get the same relationships. And therefore, I don't even really have to think about these. I could do the same math and I could find that those frequencies are NV over 2L. The frequencies that fit in there are NV over 2L. Isn't that cool? So if you were to make some sound with this, I don't know if you can hear that very well, but we could sing that note and um, we could compare it to our frequency on the piano and we would find that we get the note we're expecting. We're not gonna do that right now because I don't have a lot of time. But if you wanna uh, play with that in class, we can actually do the math and look up, you know, oh, this sounds like a B flat. What's the, and we can look up the, the frequency of a B flat. I'm not saying this is a B flat. I do not have perfect pitch. I wish I did, but I don't. Okay, so that's how we deal with a pipe that's open on both ends. Now, some of you are in the orchestra and you can think of different musical instruments. And I don't know if they're open at both ends. Uh, those, like, I, I know a flute is closed at one end and open at the other. We're gonna do that in a minute. I was watching um, a recital in the last week where there was a bassoonist. It kind of looks like the bassoon is open at both ends, but I don't know the bassoon that well. So um, if any of you play the bassoon, let me know if it's open at both ends. Now let's look at something like a flute though, that is closed at one end and open at the other. Well, if that's the case, then I'm still gonna have an anti-node at this end because the air particles can move back and forth. But the air particles can't really move back and forth when they're pressed against this wall, this closed end. So I'm going to have a node there. <laughs> so let's draw that. The easiest way to draw that is to have a node in the center and an anti-node at the end. But I could go from a node to an anti-node and then to another anti-node like that. That would work. Or I could go from a node to an anti-node, to another anti-node, and then I could put an anti-node up there. So each of those will fit here in the pipe. Now, if you want a challenge, put this on pause for a minute and try to write the wavelengths for those three. The wavelength for the black wave, the wavelength for the purple wave, and the wavelength for the green wave and see if you can do that, realizing that the, the length L has been divided equally. So feel free to put it on pause if you want. And if you did, then welcome back. So let's see this from here to here. Let's go back to this picture. We started at a node and we went for the, this uh, black colored wave up to an antinode. We went from here to here. That is one fourth of a whole wave. Do you see that this is a whole wave? Up, bump, down, bump. So up, down, down, up. So we got one fourth of the wave inside the pipe, which means the wavelength is 4L. Mm. Now for the purple one, oh, we got almost the whole wave in. We got the up bump in, and then we got half of this down bump. I would need, ooh, just a little bit more to have the full wavelength. So this is a fourth, this is a fourth, this is a fourth. I need one more 
of those fourths. Now, I know we're thinking about fourths, but from the center to the top, from the top back to the center, from the center to the bottom, one, two, three. The pipe is divided into three parts and I need one more of those thirds for the whole wavelength. So the wavelength is one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds of L. The wavelength is a little longer than the whole pipe for the purple wave. For the green wave, I get a whole wave by right here. Do you see it? That part right there that I'm making nice and dark is the full wave. So one part, another part, another part, another part, another part. The pipe has been divided into fifths. One, two, three, four, and another fifth. So the pipe's been divided into fifths, but it only takes four of those fifths to make a full wavelength. So if you see the pattern, four over one, four over three, four over five. So we've got four, over n times l. The wavelength is 4 over n times l, where here n is not all the natural numbers. n is the odd natural numbers. Mm. And then since speed equals wavelength times frequency, frequency equals speed over lambda, so this frequency is V over 4L. This frequency is V over 4 thirds L, which is 3 over 4L. And this wavelength turns into this frequency, V over 4 fifths L. So I've got 1V, 3V, and 5V all over 4L. In general, the pattern is, the, oops, the frequency is NV over 4L, where N is odd natural, odd natural numbers. Now, if you've read your textbook, then you know that these two equations on page 481, the ones I just derived. The frequency is NV over 2L and NV over 4L, where here N is the natural numbers and here N is the odd natural numbers. And this says pipe open at both ends and this says pipe closed at one end. So I've just derived these two equations, 418 and 419, for you. And there they are. So what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about vocabulary. Some things have multiple natural frequencies. Some things have no natural frequencies. If I smack on the desk, it makes a sound that's a thud, but that's not a singable sound. That's not a note or a frequency. Um, so my desk, does not have a natural frequency. But other things like this tuning fork or a wine glass not only have a natural frequency, but they have multiple natural frequencies. And so what we can see is when we plug in n equals one, that's a small frequency. And n equals three is a bigger frequency. And five, that's a bigger frequency. Or if we were talking about the pipe open at both ends, I could plug in n equals one, two, three, four, five. One would be the smallest number I can plug in there, which would give me the lowest frequency, and then two, three, four, five. So when I have multiple natural frequencies, that's really cool. The lowest frequency, which would be the lowest note, which would correspond to n equals one. The lowest natural frequency has two different names. Sometimes it's called the fundamental. 
Sometimes it's called the fundamental note or the fundamental tone or the fundamental frequency, the lowest one. And then the ones that are higher than that are called overtones. So N equals one would give me the fundamental frequency. N equals two would give me the first overtone. N equals three would give me the second overtone. N equals four would give me the third overtone. That's kind of confusing that the number of the N is one different from the number of the overtone, right? N equals one is the fundamental. So N equals two, Oh, that gives me an overtone. N equals three gives me an overtone, the second one. N equals four gives me the third overtone. Uh, now there's an easier way of naming these things because that's a little weird. Where I call the lowest note, the first harmonic. Ah, N equals one, first harmonic. N equals two, second harmonic and equals three third harmonic and that that just feels easier to me where n and this harmonic number are the same as opposed to this one where i have the first overtone is the second harmonic and the second overtone is the third harmonic. So there's these two different ways of naming things and they end up giving you names that differ in number by one. It reminds me of a time I was in England and um, I had a wonderful time when I was in England. And my favorite thing about the entire country uh, was they have these wonderful little bakeries all over the place and they uh, like to make and sell and eat scones. Uh, scones are these yummy little biscuits that are just a, a piece of heaven. So whenever I would go to a new city in England, the first thing I would do is search out the bakeries and decide who had good scones. That was just my, that was my priority. Uh, and so I remember I was in York, which is a, a beautiful old, old, old walled city. It's like the whole city's a big castle with a wall around it. Anyway, so I was in York and I was walking by myself and there was a sign in the window that said, come visit our bakery on the second floor. And I said, well, I think I'm gonna go visit your bakery. Thank you very much. So I walked into that building and I walked up a flight of stairs and I started looking around for the bakery because it said it was on the second floor. And it was not a very big building. It was a very, it, the, the whole second floor was smaller than my classroom. And so there wasn't a whole lot of looking around to do, but I was looking around and it was, it was a, a ladies dress shop. Um, and, and so anyway, it was just, it was weird that I was looking around in this dress shop um, because I didn't need a dress at the time. And, and the woman said, can I help you? And I said, well, I, I was looking for the bakery. And she said, it's up on the second floor. And I was really confused because, because I'm an American. And when I walk into a building, I think I'm on the first floor. And when I walk up one flight of stairs, I think I'm on the second floor. Not so in England. In England, when you walk into a building, you're on the ground floor. And you walk up one flight of stairs to get to the first floor. And you walk up another flight of stairs to get to the second floor. So this uh, not quite alignment of the, the way we name overtones and the way we name harmonics reminds me of the way Americans name the floors in a building and the way English people name floors in a building. It just always makes me think of that. So whenever I teach this lesson, I think of scones, which is kind of funny because I always think of scones no matter what I'm doing. Um, anyway, so, so go get yourself a scone and, and, um, and have a good time while you review all of these equations. Uh, but just remember that sometimes a book will ask you to find the second overtone and another time they might ask you to find the third harmonic and that's the same question. So it doesn't matter to me which of these systems you like better. Use the system that feels more comfortable for you. But realize that sometimes people will use the other system and you'll just have to translate that. And that's okay. 
All right. I hope you're having a good time learning about sound. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you remember not to break the laws of physics. Bye-bye.